Good morning, my name is Hilaire Martin and I work for IRSTEA at Nogent sur Vernisson in the center in France. Today we are going to give you some feedback on one experience using LIDAR data in order to test tree detection um, in insular forests uh, in the Loire River. So let's have a look at the, at the study where we are using the LIDAR data. The study is part of the Biomaro 2 project, which works on biodiversity after stream bed and stream bank excavation. Various elements are monitored, such as number of bird species, insect populations, the local beaver's diet, and plant uh, species richness. Um, this monitoring of Loire biodiversity is a part of a context in which two actors play an important role. First, is the colonization by Acer Negundo, a species which was introduced in the 18th century. Second, is the European beaver reintroduction in the 1970s, and this rodent eat uh, the black poplar or Populus nigra, the native tree in the Loire Valley, and does not eat Acer Negundo. So indirectly, this species, productive species, favors an exotic one. So the aim of this study is to test the automatic detection of Acer Negundo in a small area in order to test it in a larger scale, uh, as example, 400 kilometers along the Mid-Loire River, Nevers to Angers. Now let's have a closer look at the experimentation site. Our research was conducted in Western Loire, uh, in a mosaic of four islands, in the Loire River called Maro Opré. The site is located inside a national natural reserve, approximately 10, oh, sorry, 10 kilometers downstream from the city of Orléans. The total experimentation is around 13 hectares. And the, more, uh, the four islands are mainly dominated by species in the Salicaceae family, such as Populus nigra and willow shrubs, except for the central island, which was uprooted in 2012 in order to maintain the flow capacity of the river. So, how did we acquire our data? So, as Hilaire said, the study area is around 13 hectares. So, it's typically well suited for multi rotor UAV acquisition because it is too small to be mapped by a manned aircraft cost effectively. Uh, here is the drone we used, which is a Fox C8 Onyx Star. And the traditional approach to for three species detection is the use of multispectral imagery. But in this specific project, we also wanted to use LiDAR data in order to integrate the 3D tree structure into the three species detection. So we use the yellow scan surveyor, which, is, uh, which includes a Velodyne scanner, which have a field of view of 360 degrees and a frequency of 300,000 Hertz. And it also includes an AI and inertial navigation system and a GNSS from Aplenix. For the multispectral imagery, we used another mapping system from our own fabrication, which includes two cameras, a normal one for the red, green and blue channels and a modified one for the near infrared uh, channels. So the, the acquisition occurred in August 2017. Actually, we could not fly before August 15th because 
there was a protected bird species nesting on the islands, so all the flights were prohibited. Uh, and for the LiDAR data, we acquired it in three flights at a 45 meter height and with a line spacing of 45 meters. The corresponding side lap is around 60%. For the multispectral imagery, we made five flights at a flight height of 100 meters. The side lap was 60% and the front lap was 80%. Before the flights, we set up 15 targets on the ground. Uh, it was checkered targets and the dimension was 10 by 10 centimeters. We measured the position with an RTK GNSS. And we tried to distribute the targets homogeneously, but in some part of the islands, the, there was a dense cover of high stinging nettles which, are, uh, which is an itchy plant. And some of them was two and a half meters. So this is the final control points distributions. There, was two there were two different uses of the control points. For multispectral imagery, they are used during the aerial triangulation process as GCP. And for the LiDAR processing, they are used more to check the ground elevation accuracy and to generate an accuracy report. So there are more checkpoints than GCP. So now we'll have a look at the workflow and it's more particularly the data pre-processing. So how do we go from the, dat the raw data we collected on the field to the data sets that will, that will be used uh, for the box elder detection? So first with the imagery processing, on the field we collected the raw images from the cameras and the trajectory from the UAV. The first steps consist in register the RGB images with the near infrared images. Because as we use two cameras, there is a small shift between the images. And the purpose of registration is to reduce this shift so the, all the four channels will overlay. Besides, we synchronize the UAV trajectory with the um, list of images so that we get an image list with the initial, initial orientation and position. And we can import all this data in the photogrammetric software we used the correlator 3D software from the Simactive company. We follow the classic photogrammetic workflow with type point extractions, aerial triangulations. The auto-rectification auto was done on the DTM from the LiDAR data, and then we made some mosaicing. We produced two three-channel mosaics, an RGB one and a composite infrared color. And we also produced four single channels mosaics in order to make an, some indices calculation. So the, we calculated some index maps using the GDAL library and some the normalized difference vegetation index and also some simple RGB ratios. So now we have a look of the LIDAR processing workflow. So we basically follow the classic yellow scan workflow. So first we have the surveyor raw data, which includes the laser scanner data and the trajectory data. And we have on the other side, the base station logs. The first steps consist in correct the trajectory data with the base station log using postpack and we get a smooth based estimated trajectory that we can import in the YellowScan plugin. So now it would be the cloud station, but in 2017, it was still the plugin. Yeah, we also import the laser scanner data into the plugin and it generates the last file, the point clouds and the trajectory. The next steps are done with the TerraSolid software and we use TerraMatch and TerraScan. 
you, the TerraMatch module, we use it to calculate a mismatch, a 3D mismatch between the flight lines, and to reduce it by applying some correction on the heading, roll, and pitch angles. Then we use the TerraScan module, several routines successive to classify the point cloud. And finally, we extract uh, the digital terrain model and the digital canopy model. So here are the products of multispectral imagery. So you can see two visualization auto visualizations. So there is the infrared colored composite up and you can see that the vegetation appears in red. And down there is the classic RGB mosaics. We also produce the four single channel autos for, to make the indices maps. The indices we calculated were the normal, normalized difference vegetation index, which is a ratio between the near infrared value and the red value. And we also calculated some simple RGB ratios. And it was, for example, the red value divided by the green and the blue value, and so. So here is a, an overview of the point cloud, which consists in 57 million points. The average density was 215 points per square meter and the ground point density was around 130 points per square meters. It was classified in six classes, uh, ground, water, and four vegetation classes, depending on their height. From the ground class, we then extracted the digital terrain model, and we applied a shift, so we will have the elevation to the, the river level. And we extracted the canopy height model by computing the height from ground to the vegetation point. OK, now let's have a look at the delineation step. Tree crown delineation is performed on Earth software with the library uh, LIDAR tree written by Jean Mathieu Monet. And uh, this, um, this, uh, this tree crown delineation is performed on canopy eye model by using a general function which consists in the several steps. First is uh, image pre-processing with non-linear filtering and smoothing for noise removal. Next is the local maxima filtering and selection of tree top delineation. And then we have image segmentation by using watershed algorithm for tree delineation. So how does it work more precisely? Uh, the first parameter is to set the minimum tree top height. In this study, we set, it, we set this value to 2.5 meter due to tall nettles. As example, uh, in, the, in this draw, the little shrub to the left is not selected. The second parameter is a treetop minimum distance uh, between a treetop and a higher pixel. Below this value, trees under the, the canopy or near the, the big tree is not selected. It is the case here for these little shrubs near the big tree. For crown size, uh, for crown size it's, um, the value is indicated by crown prop uh, value and below this value, below the, the eight pair proportion of the tree, uh, tree crowns are not selected. It is the case here for this, this one. And to finish, in order to avoid tree crowns from spreading excessively in order story shrubs, the operator can set a green, mon green uh, minimum height in order to avoid this, uh, this problem. Sorry. 
here. So the result is a shape vector, but at this time of the analysis, we couldn't attribute um, crowns to three species. We had another uh, function, is a tree extraction, who allows the operator to extract data from the LIDAR cloud to the crowns. The same thing is done with the five minutes. Okay. The same thing is done with the leader, uh, with the index uh, vegetation index, as uh, Marie told you before, and it, it's extracted to the crowns. Now we've got some metrics and we've got some objects. We need to have a training data to feed the classification model. In order to separate Acer negundo and Populus nigra, we perform a training validation layer from the imagery, drawing on both visual interpretation and field experience, more than 300 circles of one meter diameter. Then we run our analysis on air software using uh, three decision statistics. In orange, Acer Negundo. In green, Populus Nigra. Three selections selected high standard deviation at first level and standard deviation of a simple ratio at the second level. The simple ratio is red divided per green plus blue. Uh, we detect um, the, the precision of detection of Acer Negundo is almost 19% and the 10% left could be Acer Negundo under the big Populus Nigra. To sum up, for Populus Nigra, height standard deviation is higher than for Acer Negundo. Here we have an effect of the local beaver diet who create holes in the canopy. For Acer Negundo, we've got an effect of the seed dispersal due, due to bank colonization by hydrochory. In a way, we could say that Acer Negundo stands look like regular forests. The index vegetation selected didn't take into account near infrared. This result could give information to reduce costs if we had the project to map this introduced species all around, all along the Loire, Mid Loire River, around 400 kilometers. Here, there is a, uh, as example, a map, a prediction map of the Western Island. You can see Acer Ningundu is mainly dominate, uh, located in the banks, but we could not uh, see what happens under the big trees. Another project, uh, another project could be to try to discriminate species under the, the canopy. And in a way, understanding these forest ecosystems can give uh, also information to uh, manage forests, especially in mixed stands. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>